Hey guys, well, something different today. We're going to go uh, a little bit musty one on you. Um, I've got a couple of jobs I need to do coming up, um, which are going to involve some clearance to get to our cables. I, th I have a video that I need to get permission to put up, which will explain that. Uh, so I've gone and bought a collection of small machinery that will be useful to do the job. Um, but most of it is non-running. So I'm going to take a look at this one today. This one is C solid. Um, we've got some rotation down here, but my feelings on this is going to be its valve train. It has the world's dinkiest little cam belt in there. So I'll get you set up and uh, we'll tear into this and see if we can see what's going. This is a four stroke engine, so it would be nice to get it running, but I'm uh, not expecting a lot. I'm also disturbingly noticing that although I've got all these parts that came with it, I don't have any nuts or bolts. So I might have to look along the uh, other bits we've got and see if they're in there. Anyway, let's uh, dive in. Right, I'm in the basement. Um, Sounds going to be strange. I've got to have the door open because of the uh, traffic going past. So um, let's just have a quick look here and see what we've got. So we've got that's all part of crankcase ventilation. So we have a shield here of some kind that obviously goes on the carb. That's obviously part of the car. Air filter housing. Not especially sure what that is. And then this. We don't have the long bolts for the car, but I think that's all we're missing. No, we're missing all the hardware for everything else. So, carburetor wise, what have we got? Um, it would help to just visualise what we've got. So, we've got an o ring there. I should put gloves on for this. Uh, we've got okay. We've got two holes here, two hose clamps. So I think we might be missing hose. I'm not sure this one is going to be a good one to start on anyway. So that most definitely goes on that way. That goes. There, no, it doesn't. I can't go there. So, yeah, putting this together is going to be a bit of a learning experience for the looks because I actually do not understand how this would fit together unless we're missing a block. Let me just pop this on its side. Uh, the fuel tank is full, so what I might actually do is get rid of that in a second. Let's have a look. I have something suitable to do that with. Too big. I also don't have a full fuel, uh, full tool kit down here, so. go and get something. Be that. Yeah. So let's just pop that out of the way. rounded off so to be completely honest I'm not that worried about the carb or anything else yet until I can get this engine to turn and the top of this is so rounded off that I've got to try and keep sufficient pressure on the screwdriver to get anywhere so there we go so run of the mill type setup. Looking at the screw that's just come off that I'm going to struggle even more. Does this prime is going to be the next question. Yes it does. Right. Ha, that stinks. Pop 
that around there so it can leak to itself. So we've got something missing from there. So quite obviously a bit of a hose or something that should be there. So there is quite a bit of this one missing so this might end up being more of a why did it die. Crankcase ventilation or a pump of some kind. That's oily which makes me suspect there's nothing in the um, bottom. Let's just clear some of this away. So I'm going to have to pause you and go and get some tools to get in here but if we have a look we are stuck fast but I can, I don't know if you can see down there rotate anti-clockwise and then we get stuck so my feeling is this belt isn't on right. right I'm going to pause you for a second and go get some other tools Right. So we need to look for timing marks and things like that. So I think, let's zoom you out a bit. Uh, best thing to do is going to be to separate this from the shaft for now. So let's go about doing that. Of course that's just launched itself underneath the bench. So we've got bolts either side here. Guessing the recoil will be part of the shaft. My concern is that the engine is uh, going to just wrap around everywhere while we uh, have it off the shaft. So I might shove a plug in that hose that comes off the uh, bottom of the crankcase. Just awkward. It's not off yet. One down here. The uh, biggest reason for taking the shaft off is, my suspicion, is the valve timing's out. So I need to be able to get to the timing marks on the flywheel. I don't think there is any easy way of seeing them. And the fact that this is quite possibly dead beyond redemption as well. Um, my thoughts... I probably make a mess are along the lines that this has been reassembled incorrectly so hopefully it wasn't running when it all went a bit pear-shaped with that timing belt but the other possibility is it's really quite exposed there's nothing really protecting it so it could also have done it something gets sucked in or someone's been playing in there and running it without the lead it wouldn't take much for that to all go a bit peak tall. Get this bolt all the way out. We're still stuck somewhere. it's ready to come off. Maybe it's because I haven't taken that out properly. Let's 
thought so. Coffee time. Just zoom you out a bit. Probably don't want this upside down if I can avoid it. There's something there. Oh, there's a cross hedge fill in there. Okay, that, that's nice of you guys. Find an appropriate screwdriver. Why is it the screwdriver you want is always the one that's worked its way into the bottom? The tool bag, so we've got two cross heads in here. This may be a case of the things they want you to remove and be able to poke at are done with cross heads, and everything else is done with forks. I've certainly seen that before. Right, we have a connector there, that's our throttle, which is already off. I'm just hoping no, we still can't split this. Pop that out of there. It feels fairly well attached. I wonder if these torques we've got in here do need to come out. But I'd have assumed that they were just a recoil. Well, if you can take the recoil off this engine, even if we can't really rescue the rest of it, this engine becomes quite useful. It's quite a nice little four stroke. It's, well, nice in the form of it's compact, self contained. Okay, something else is moving now. We're also dripping oil, which is why it's on a board. This is the recoil starter that's coming off. Everything is moving now. Ah, there we go. Except we can't have the rope. Now this is interesting because we can't actually do much here. Um, they could pull the rope out. I'd pick the. Sorry, if we could pull the recoil out a bit, I'd pick the rope out. Well, it does look like it's no longer engaged, so oh, that's interesting. So it looks like it's actually the shaft that might be stuck. over a bit more. Right, let's find something to dig that out with. Not framed very well at the moment. Because I'm working against spring tension here as well. No, I don't think I've got any chance of getting that out of there. I am encouraged by the fact that I do now appear to be able to turn the engine over, so that's got to be a good thing. Or can I? Nope, that engine definitely turns. I'm not sure, I don't want to cut the starter. I think that might actually be our easiest way out here. Also, if 
for the wrong job. That's just gone into there. Go in the bin. And that's our leg off. So yeah, the starter is definitely part of it. And no, that that isn't actually. That's jammed again. Okay, cool. Right. Um, there should be a timing mark somewhere. One would assume. Definitely have compression, which I would find slightly odd. But yeah, we we seem to hit. Now the recommendation appears to be, from what I've seen online, oh, that we need to find TDC and then once we find TDC that is how these are timed up. So we need to get spark plug out. Uh, what we'll do is we'll get the engine to TDC yeah there'll be something similar to these to go with the carburetor as well so yeah we'll get this up to TDC and see well if we can get it to TDC and see where when we've got it there timing or mark on the valves are. So we do actually have a timing mark on here apparently. I believe that hole there is the timing. Oh that's Diddy. So we reckon that is. Not one of those, what was that? That was 15. One of 14, then, was it? 16? Yeah. That was loose. That's not in great condition. Doesn't look like it's been smashed one. So we'll uh, carry on. Leave that over there. Right. What have we got? That's BDC. Okay. That's slightly intriguing. That's bottom dead centre, and that's now very notchy. So that's top dead centre there. That mark is at the top, which is what I'd expect, because our cam runs at half of engine speed. That is top dead centre there, something else is going on here. So now I'm fully expecting this engine to actually be toast, so let's get in and have a deeper look. I'm going to have to drain some oil out of this, assuming there is any in there. Uh, anywhere we can prise on that. Yep. Ah, oh, 
Oh, look at those valves, aren't they cute? So. Okay, that turns easier now. There's definitely something not right though. What have we got head bolt wise? There is, okay, it's, there is no head. So we can't actually do anything to drain this. I can't actually do anything to take the head off of this. They're very, very loose. on the can itself. It does sound like it's something. Let's just make sure that belt doesn't come off. Right, okay, I guess we need to find something to drain that oil into. Should not be a problem around here. I'll just pause you for a second. <coughs> so here we have an example of why you don't put IKEA boxes in the dishwasher. Don't touch this, it's hot. That can go in there. There is oil in here by the looks. Not much. That can't be good. I expected more than that. Well, it could just be that this has been upside down. Let's see what that oil looks like. Oil. There's nothing in there that makes me think, uh oh. So let's just see what's going on in the bottom of the engine. This is where I wish I'd put gloves on. Oh god, I found the uh, appropriate end for the impact. Not 100% sure what we're going to find in here, but that was very, very low on oil, so I wouldn't be surprised if this engine is... Um, Beyond recovery. So we put one bolt in the rocker cover and half a million bolts in the sump. I guess the risk is with these that they're going to be used at angles where the oil circulation isn't necessarily going to be that good. these to a point where I can just spin them out. Yay, watch Richard take the sump off an engine. I could use the impact. My concern with the impact is these are all quite small fastenings and well within the ability of even my little impact that it could just destroy any of these and obviously we've got a couple of heads on here that are rounded already and we have most definitely had someone in here before so I've got stories on the other streamer which is it just stops working he reckons it's carburetor problems it's a small two-stroke it probably is um, the chainsaw has a issue result around the exhaust. I'm not sure about that. He says he squirts WD-40 in it and it runs. And as soon as WD-40 is burnt off, it doesn't run anymore. Um, I don't know if that's a two-stroke or a four-stroke. If it's a two-stroke, 
uh, that could be a sign that it's been run with no oil and it's just burnt up. I think no oil might be what's killed this one. Uh, other possibility is the rings are shot. Um, trouble with that is if everything's gone badly enough for it to be as notchy as it felt, the odds are fairly high that the jug's going to be toast as well. And given that it all seems to be one moulding in here, it doesn't really give a lot of hope for the engine. I'm going to get a rag to wipe my hands in a second. I could probably have fast forwarded this. Finding myself wishing that I'd use the impact just to save my fingers. There's no glitter in that, which. But then again, if you're used to working on car engines where you've got bearing shells and things like that, these engines just aren't built to the same level. So quite often, your push rod will be running on the crankshaft without any kind of bearing. You get up into the range of Briggs and Stratton and things like that, then yeah, there may be bearing shells in there. Right. Oh, that came off way easier. Stay there. Right, there's nothing in there I'm worried about. There is a lot of oil in there still. Though. I can see a bearing that could, in theory, be a problem as well. A bit more oil in it now. Oil definitely smells like it was overdue a change. Right, so what? So if we want to take anything out, we've literally got to dismantle the whole thing. So let's just turn this now. And yeah, we've got a definite... that I can actually see what that is. So we've got... this notch... sorry. This notch here isn't right. And then there is a score in the piston on... Score in the wall on one side, which actually looks like it could be a defect. I don't know if you can see it. So I'm guessing everything is just slotted together. So how would you get that out? You would need to take that crankshaft off. No way there. Crankshaft is off put fit. There is nowhere near enough movement on there to do it. But I can see the problem. Let me see if I can get you in here. See what the rest of that bore's like as much as I can see. So I don't actually know how you would um, dismember this any further. So I don't know if you can see. Let's get it to focus. Just down. Let me see if I can get a bit more light on this for you. So what I'm seeing is there is a burr at the very bottom of the ball. And I actually think that's all that there is there. Let's see if this helps. 
you can just see it. Sorry, get the paint. Just there. Just in here. So, my question is can I knock that off? It probably means that something way nastier has happened. But I'm sure that's it. It is quite a pert, and I would have. The only way I could see that would happen would be melting. How far down does it go? Hmm. I can see this turning into a uh, will it run type thing. Uh, let me see. I think I have one in this toolbox. Yes, I do. I think the odds of this running properly again are uh, slim to none. So I'm going to do something that's going to make you all scream. We're going to file that down. Just knock that edge off. And then we'll flush this out. And that does, that score goes quite the way down. That doesn't feel like it's there anymore. So I'm not expecting this engine to last now, um, it is something that I will use myself, I won't inflict on anyone else, that feels better, I've just thrown my rag in with the oil, but it would be nice if we can at least get this to um, do something on the picture, so that now spins absolutely beautifully, um, that is obviously going to get worse. So, I don't know how far we're going to get without actually having a proper carburetor. So those are them ones. Right, I'll pause you for a sec. Right, I'm just going to slosh a bit of this in. This is isopropyl alcohol, just to wash out some of what we've put in there. And thin that old oil up a bit, there we go. So that should have, all of our metal from filing is now in there. Yeah, so I would, Never trust this with a customer again now. This is uh, beyond. So let's just spin this back in. I will probably will fast forward it this time. So we've got that back together, I've just checked to make sure that we've got spark, I had to stop the video for something else and that distracted me, so we've just put a tiny amount of fuel in there. Oh, we now have a box of fuel oil, oh there's just fuel going everywhere now. Not near my phone, please not near my phone. So the cap on the tank was just full of fuel. And now everything's separate. Can we put that over there and it'll stay up? Yeah. At least we've got a source of fuel now. 
So hopefully we'll get at least a pot out of this. I don't want any more because obviously we've got top open, we've not really got much in terms of oil in it. I just want to see it fire. Uh, there's not many places to hold on to this either. Uh, that's... No, I think what we're going to have to do is just pop that back on so that I have some. What is that? Decompression valve? That seems unlikely. So I think that there. Yep. It may pop, it may not. Make sure that is still on correctly. Just really not much to hold on to here. Uh, I reckon, for safety's sake, we're going to go on the side like that. Because now we've got compression. So that is going to be almost impossible to crank over like that. We just popped that valve out of there. Maybe if we go on the carburetor side of things would be safer. So that has eaten through. That already. So that was obviously not really in the best place to start with. Um, I don't really want to give it stinky oily fuel. Um, bear with me, I'll be right back. What I really need is a vice, but the whole beggars can't be cheesers type thing. Right, I'm going to pop this on. Or at least try and pop this on. You know what, I'd feel a lot more comfortable about this with at least some form of protection. We're all getting a bit busy around here now. So we've got a ferrule that's come off there somewhere. Stuff in there. that all just engages in there like that. There's just not really anywhere to easily hold this, so I'd rather there was something to help me out here. And I've just seen why there was no ferrule. Quite frankly, if this even runs, I will be genuinely impressed. Uh, let's take that out again. Tie knot in this yet, especially when it looks like all I'm doing is pulling the core. Yeah. 
I'm sure there probably is a much easier way of doing this. To be fair, there's probably a much easier way of doing everything I've done over the last half hour. Right, bolts. So we've got these that hold the plastics on and then we've got these which actually hold the pull start on in some way. Yep, that one's just gone out. I have no oil in this at the moment. I have no oil really for it, but I am tempted just on the basis of the extra lubricity and to get anything that we've dropped in there out to actually chuck some ATF in this because I do have plenty of ATF. I've got a Range Rover, so I'm always going to have plenty of ATF. I'm just working on the basis, the extra lubricity of the ATF will potentially get it further around the engine and get some of that swarf that we've created out. So ideally what I'd like to do is get back on the site where I need these this week or next week. Um, one of our telecoms cabinets has gone over and I want to basically take it back to bare earth because where it's gone over everything has taken over but yeah get it back to bare earth so I can um, get some concrete down there to stop it from happening again because this is me I you know this is me that will be using this equipment it will be going into our event stuff. I'm not so worried about spontaneous death because, well, I know it's going to happen at some point. But obviously, a customer would be uh, less than happy if you sold them something that you knew was going to die. It doesn't stop some people, but it's not the way we do business. And to be completely honest, I don't sell garden machinery anyway, so not a problem. Now, the theory runs that this should, in theory, start. I have a little pipette here. I have a fuel tank leaking slowly. I don't know if these pipettes are going to deal with petrol. It's not dissolving yet. Right, so we want to get that out of the way. We're all good, we're all plumbed in. That doesn't matter what position that's in. Give it a bit go juice. Everything's just fallen over again. To be fair, it's probably going to fall over multiple times in a second. Mm, okay. Yeah, I can see a problem there straight away. How did that happen? We have life! We do that again. Right, 
So we can't do much more of that because we don't have any oil. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put a little bit of ATF in there just to get us going. And we'll try and work out some of these hoses. But yeah, I think we are uh, certainly getting to where we want to be. Bye bye then. It's going to be one of those days where I'm just going to throw everything everywhere. Oh, that smells lovely now. Not. ATF on the floor. I'm not sure I could make much more mess. I do have a dipstick here. So what I'm going to do is I might opt for sorting the carburetor out rather than the exhaust a bit more because we have screws. Uh, run this for a little while, not a lot. There we go, that looks good. Run this for a little while, let the uh, ATF just circulate around everything. Um, sweep up all the bits and the crud. And then I will change that out for something slightly more suited to the job. We should be good. So my guess is on this, what killed it would be oil starvation. So I'll just give it a go again. But that feels a lot better. Should we give it one more? Clutch works. So, uh, things we've got to look at. Putting all this back together. Uh, you got to work out how this all goes now. So we've got to get this fuel tank back on, which is just dripping fuel everywhere now. I'm guessing it had sort of sealed itself up with crud and everything else, and now we've moved it. So that quite obviously sits down in there and on there like that. We've got not quite sure where any of this should actually be. That's the problem. Possibly find a fuel tank like that. I mean, there is a catchy thing there. Let's. Oh, we've got to put those two flat screws back in as well, haven't we? So all we've got left is one of those. Oh, this is the other problem we're going to now run into. We just don't have all the screws for this. That feels like that is a completely different of screw. Is it one of those? Yes it is. So now, next mystery. Carb. That quite obviously should go into there. So that's the air box. If I used one of those exhaust bolts, would it work? No, so there's no point in messing with that too much. There is something missing. That can't fit there. It can't go upside down, so we are missing some kind of spacer. So 
So that goes in like that. That random oil passage does look like it's supposed to go down there. Uh, I don't have anything to do that with. That's the air from the top. My guess would be that on there, that on there, then you can't see it. We're missing something down there, and I think I'm almost certain we are missing something by the looks to move that carburetor around. So a plate of some kind that would possibly bring the carburetor around like that. Right, I'm going to pause here. I'm going to go and make sure that I haven't dropped anything important anywhere. That's handy. It turns out we were missing a bag of bits. Yeah. So that looks like our carburetor bolts. And a few other bits, so... How does this all work then? So, we have this random little thing, which is quite obviously... ...to go on there. And then that sits in it and clips in so that's good so we've worked all that out that has so there are missing nuts or missing nut oh no okay so they obviously go in there This is all starting to slightly make sense now. I think we are still missing a part. I only see a single um, carburetor nut. Are we on? Yep. So there should be another one like that, which I think is that one. Be able to run this properly. Of course, now I've filled this with oil, it's just occurred to me I've got it on its side, so I should probably be careful about that. Everything is very oily here, which suggests that it may have been had apart and drained. Okay, so that obviously goes like that. Our carburetor then goes like that, which means we need our accelerator cable, which I buried, or throttle cable for the Americans. So let's take that off. That quite obviously is supposed to come up there. Does look like about the only route it can take. It does look like there's a guide of some kind there. So that now goes on there. Mm -hmm.